And speaking of shocks, we've got a couple other big stories to get to here. One of the shocks last week was the story out of the U.S. Supreme Court. You know what happened. A draft opinion was leaked, and this was a majority opinion on a case that's come before the U.S. Supreme Court. And the majority opinion determined, and of course we don't know the exact status of the deliberations in the court, but this shows that at least as of February 10th, there were five justices who were willing to vote to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, this is a pretty complex subject because I don't think people really understand what that means. Roe v. Wade was a decision that was made uh, back in the 70s about abortion, and it basically found um, you know, that abortion was allowed and it broke things down into trimesters. So at will during the first trimester with some regulation during the second trimester and then not uh, much – uh, restriction on the regulation in the third trimester. So essentially, states could shut down abortion in the third trimester. But of course, uh, a lot of this has been expanded and dealt with through the years. Uh, some regulations have been allowed to increase based on some decisions in the 1990s, the Casey decision. And uh, this is all very important. But the most important thing is that you've got a leak of a draft Supreme Court opinion, which has never happened before in the history, at least that's recorded or documented, of the Supreme Court. You've got a leak of a draft opinion, and there's only one reason that happened, and that is to try to influence those five justices who had signed on to vote to overturn Roe v. Wade. And we're going to tell you some more about that on the other side of this break, but that should never have happened. Here we are back on the Morgan Streetman Show. I'm Roxanne Wilder. Great to, hear, great to be here with Morgan, with Pat. If you want to be a part of the show, 888-404-1010. I know something that is on a lot of folks' minds is inflation and how it's going to affect their personal finances. We're going to get into that in a moment. But let's go back to what we were talking about before we hit the break, Morgan, when we were delving into what recently happened within the Supreme Court. Well, you know, we- there's... There's so much to dive into with this draft Supreme Court opinion, and I don't think we can necessarily believe what we hear in the news because we're hearing things from places like the Washington Post. And, of course, anytime I read something like that, I'm looking at it with what you'd call a jaundiced eye. I'm not buying into it wholesale right off the bat. So they're telling us things like, oh, there's this battle, but there's still the five votes to support the draft uh, majority opinion. We do know that that was a legitimate draft opinion. That much has come out. Justice Ro- uh, Chief Justice Roberts has issued a statement that confirms that it was a legitimate draft, and he has tasked the Supreme Court Marshal with investigating it. She's a former U.S. Army uh, lawyer who's a colonel. Now, she is just the Marshal of the Supreme Court, though. This is not the U.S. Marshal's service, so this is a little bit different. This is the person essentially who's in head the head of the Supreme Court security only, so just for the court. So Chief Justice Roberts has tasked her with figuring out who leaked this opinion. And most commentators are pointing to one of the clerks for Justice Sonia Sotomayor and saying, well, it's got to be one of those because she hires the most liberal, the most Marxist, the most committed ideologues who are fighting a battle. I don't know if that's true, that it was one of her clerks or not. It could have been, I think, about they've got about 70 people on the list that would have had access to the draft opinion and could have leaked it. But really, it's so important because this is an attack on the integrity of the court. This has never happened before. And, you know, they've issued some controversial decisions, including Roe v. Wade, which was unexpected at the time. And you want to get into the details of the legal reasoning. We probably need a little bit more time than that. But the reason that Roe v. Wade is set to be overturned is because it was bad judicial decision making. Why? Because judges are not supposed to make law. The role of the judge is supposed to be to say what the law is and not what it should be. And the justices in the Roe case decided what they thought the law should be. How did they do that? They found implicit rights. So those are rights that don't actually appear in the text of the Constitution. And they found them in the 14th Amendment equal protections and due process protections. And they said, well, this says that the government is supposed to protect life and liberty. And so therefore, within that is a right to privacy. And they called it the they found the right in what they called the penumbra, which is kind of like the halo 
around the actual language. Now, there's no such thing in real life as a penumbra on the Constitution, but this is what they wrote in the opinion that, you know, because of these things that are said, it must clearly mean that there are these other implicit rights, including the right to privacy and the right to medical decision making. And I think largely there is a right to privacy. Certainly we've got it ensconced in our Florida Constitution, and there should be a right to privacy and medical decision making. But, you know, some of the things we've learned about abortion uh, since Roe that we did not know at the time really changed the calculus on some of the factual issues. Okay, and that would be things like when does your baby first have a heartbeat? You know when that is? It's, It's by the way, it's before you even know you're pregnant. Your baby first the first beating in the heart area starts well it's actually five weeks five so a little over a month after conception there is a beating in the heart area now the fully formed heart comes at about 10 weeks but that is typically before most women actually know that they're pregnant at that time and i think the confusing thing is that when you say five weeks pregnant that doesn't mean your conception was five weeks prior. That means the start of your last period was five weeks prior. That's what five weeks means. So it's actually from, it's, that would actually be three weeks. Wow. Okay. So from the time that you actually conceive, is, does that make sense? Am mm-hmm. I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but the big picture point, right, is that your baby's got a heartbeat before you realize it. Your baby, and it's a living creature. It's a human being. Even Joe Biden has now admitted that, that an abortion aborts a child. Now, he misspoke when he said that, and everybody's up in arms now that, oh, the conservatives are going to use this against us because he didn't call it a fetus, like this thing that's not really a human. It's like this slime that's inside of you. It's a fetus. Even think about the fetus. That word even sounds kind of slimy. It's not a human. No, that's a human child that is now inside your body. So your body, your choice, but that child also has a body, and it's hit its choice as well. Anyway, that's those are facts that weren't known at the time Roe was decided, and it was decided to allow uh, abortions uh, across the nation. Now, the key here with overturning Roe is it will then become a state-by-state issue. So each state will get to decide whether it wants to put restrictions on abortions, whether it wants to make abortions completely legal, as we've heard some states uh, you know, are really saying we're going to do it all the way up to birth. You could have an abortion. We've heard that kind of rhetoric. I don't know if that'll actually come to pass because that's pretty barbaric, but we'll see what these states decide to do. But there are going to have, there are going to be options. So if you don't like the way Texas deals with it or Mississippi or Florida deals with it, you know, go to New York and California. Be our guest. As they would say at Disney, be our guest. Go ahead and move to one of these states where you like the policies better. And I mean, look, if you love all these progressive policies, please move to California. They need you there because everybody's fleeing California because of the results of all those policies. So if you love them so much, vote with your feet and move there and you'll get to live the life that you want. Nothing will change for you. So I don't view it as this big of a deal as they're trying to say, as though it's making abortion illegal everywhere. That's what they're trying to say in the media. And really what it's doing is allowing each state to make its own decisions. But they got five votes, Thomas Alito, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Coney Barrett. And make no mistake about it, this release of the draft opinion was targeted right at Brett Kavanaugh. Right at Brett Kavanaugh. Because he's the weakest of those votes. He's, I think, he's the one most likely to crack. And where did the protesters show up over the weekend? Because, oh, that's the other thing. They dox these people's, these justices' residential addresses. So they dox their home addresses. And sure enough, Sunday evening, protesters, or excuse me, Saturday evening, uh, into the early hours of Sunday, protesters show up at Justice Kavanaugh's home. It looked like several dozen, so it wasn't a whole army. But they're angrily shouting at his home. They're holding signs and things like that. And, of course, when asked about some of this stuff last week about the doxing of the justices and the potential for having protests at their homes, Jen Psaki, who was at the time the White House um, uh, press secretary, refused to condemn it, saying essentially that people should be allowed to do political protests. Well, yeah, they should in the proper context, like out in front of the Supreme Court and on the National Mall and other public places. But should they be allowed to go to somebody's home and protest? People say, well, I don't know. That's a close call. Well, let me tell you, it's not a close call because there is a federal law right on point. It's 18 U.S.C. 1507. It's an obstruction of justice charge. And it says whoever 
with the intent of interfering with, obstructing, or impeding the administration of justice, or with the intent of influencing any judge, juror, witness, or court officer in the discharge of his duty, pickets or parades, in or near a building, housing of court of the United States, or in or near a building or residence occupied or used by such judge. And it goes on from there, but I know it's hard for you guys to listen to me read a federal statute to you. But the point is that if you're picketing in front of a judge's residence for the purpose of influencing, obstructing, or impeding their decision-making process, which is clearly what's going on here, then you've committed obstruction of justice. And you should be subject to arrest, but I doubt that they will be arrested. Nobody was arrested that I saw at the protest. It wasn't shut down immediately? It, no. Apparently, the protesters kind of fled when the police showed up in some reasonable force, and maybe they thought they were about to get arrested under this law. Maybe they knew that what they were doing. I mean, these you know how this protest this protest stuff is like an industry of its own. You know, it's it's some of these protesters are paid. I don't know the exact case in this scenario, but we've certainly seen that. But, you know, it's just like with the Antifa and BLM riots that we saw. They're not they're selectively not prosecuted. Meanwhile, the January 6th defendants are kept in solitary confinement for over a year, not even granted bail. Whereas the Antifa folks, it's a catch and release inside the U.S. They just catch them and they just let them go. And, of course, this is only going to encourage more protests, more violence. This is what the left wants. They're very comfortable now with using violence to accomplish political ends. Again, more Marxist-Leninist ideology creeping into our system, creeping into our civic world, because now violence is an acceptable tool for some people to reach political ends. And we're going to see more of this. You know, there's rumors that Alito has actually had to go into, essentially go into hiding. He's been taken away from his home to a secure location because there's a real concern that he's going to be targeted with violence. Now, um, lest you think that this obstruction of justice charge has never been used before, it was used on uh, some protesters called the 99 Rise protesters, and it's been used on others who, who showed up at the Supreme Court essentially and started talking during arguments, and they were protesting voting issues uh, involving uh, Citizens United. And another case, it's it's too complicated to get into to explain, just consider voting issues, and they were protesting it, but they got up in the middle of court and started yelling. They were all arrested and prosecuted under that 18 U.S.C. 1507, which is the attempt to impede or influence the decision-making process of the judiciary and others involved in the court system. Now, now, now let's look at all the hypocrisy of the left, because it's amazing. You see CNN's headline, law enforcement officials warn of potential violence in D.C. and nationwide in wake of Supreme Court draft opinion. Well, guess what kind of violence they say law enforcement is warning of? Right-wing violence. Pro-life violence, because, you know, there's so much of that. You know, go pull all of the pro-life violence. Now, there have been some attacks at abortion clubs, abortion uh, clinics, excuse me, but... There's not as much right-wing violence, and certainly not recently, as there is left-wing violence. But CNN's saying, watch out for the pro-lifers. Meanwhile, what's actually happening on the ground? Well, in Madison, Wisconsin, a pro-life organization was firebombed over the weekend. Okay, Wisconsin Family Action had somebody throw a Molotov, break their window and throw a Molotov cocktail in there, spray-painted graffiti all over, including the Antifa symbol, which is really the anarchy symbol. But they're now calling that the Antifa symbol. They spray painted that and they spray painted uh, a picture of a coat hanger. And it said, if abortions aren't safe, you aren't either. So that's a pretty clear threat. Then we had outside of a Catholic church in New York City yesterday. There were staged protests at the Basilica of Old St. Patrick in New York. And folks, I can't even tell you some of the stuff that was going on at this protest. It was so offensive and blasphemous but at one point they were chanting thank god for abortion this is while the church service was going on inside they're trying to harass these people uh and then there was a lady or a man it was hard to tell called crackhead barney who was dressed up like a woman again i'm not sure if it was a woman or a man it was really hard to tell and she was saying all kinds of things that i can't repeat because of the cuss words in them but she at one point was screaming i'm killing them I'm killing the babies. And she just kept screaming that over and over. It was an offensive protest. No matter what your mindset is, no matter what your thought process is on those politics, it was just offensive to watch. 
And that's the left for you in American politics today. Thank you for listening to The Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard. And if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.